later on The Tonight Show. It's time for one last goodbye from Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Plus, the music of Brandy. Your local news is next. Midlands viewers say goodbye tonight to Jerry Seinfeld and the gang. Another Lexington County student is suspended. Police say he brought a loaded gun to school. And double dog Rick Henry puts on his walking shoes for this week's lengthy dare. Nightcast starts right now. WIS listens in the spirit of Carolina from the capital city. Tonight's live late breaking news with Susan Audet Fisher, Ed Carter, meteorologist Jim Gandy, and Rick Henry Sports. This is WIS News Nightcast. A heartbreaking end today to the intense search for a missing toddler when searchers find the body of little Yusuf Yunus. Uh, it's an unfortunate outcome, but it, it, there is some sense of closure. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Our top story tonight, five days after he disappeared from the family party, little Yusuf Yunus is found dead in the Edisto River. Orangeburg officials say Yusuf's body was in a swampy area about a half mile from his home. Our Nana Brooke was in Orangeburg today when the search for Yusuf came to its tragic end. Uh, we need your teams to work here and these woods all the way down. At a morning briefing, officers from North Charleston get their orders to search. Bottom line is we're putting you guys in the nasty places. Little Yusuf Yunus is still missing, so they will keep looking. He had dark hair, he had on a black t-shirt with Florida across it. Boats go into the water to help with the search. They've done that every day since Sunday, but today is different. Just before 2 o'clock, searchers come out of the river. This time, they have with them the body of 17-month-old Yusuf. We did find Yusuf in the river in the swamp area at about 1130. Orangeburg Public Safety Chief Wendell Davis says the investigation continues. The fact that we found Yusuf in the river uh, does not in itself mean that he accidentally fell in the river. So uh, we will have an examination of the body, as we said earlier, to rule out any evidence whatsoever that it, uh, we might have had some foul play. So for the searchers and those who helped them, it's time to go home, even though things didn't turn out as they had hoped. I'm one of those eternal optimists. I didn't give up hope until there was proof that I that there's just a need for prayers now. The searchers who found Yusuf were paddling through a swampy area of the river in a kayak. Chief Davis says the area had been searched earlier this week with no luck. The Lexington Medical Center added another huge name to a long list of high-profile speakers for its foundation fundraiser. Tonight, former British Prime Minister John Major headlined the event. Major was first elected to the British Parliament in 1979 and became Prime Minister in 1990. Tonight, Major spoke of the uniquely close relationship between the United States and the United Kingdom. He recalled a very frank conversation in the back of a car with former President George Bush about when the Gulf War would begin. I can't imagine having a conversation like that with the head of any other government other than the United States in which I'd have told him unequivocally exactly what uh, weapons we got, what we were prepared to do with them. Nobody else present. Just a completely frank and forthcoming discussion with someone who until that day I'd known only at a distance. Major also discussed the continuing threat posed by Saddam Hussein, who he called an international menace. And tonight, the Lexington Medical Center Foundation announced that their fall speaker will be actor Charlton Heston. An early evening fire destroys a Midlands home. It happened before 7 tonight on North Lincolnshire Drive. That's off Fairfield Road, north of I-20. When firefighters arrived, they found flames shooting from the roof. Firefighters tried to douse those flames, but the fire spread to another, other areas of the house. Witnesses tell firefighters they heard explosions inside the house. No one was at home at the time. The fire was a total loss. The Columbia Fire Department is investigating. Well, we've been saying this all week, but it was another beautiful day around the Midlands. Jim Gandy's in the Weather Center with a look at our first forecast. Another carbon copy of tomorrow, Jim, we well, hope. Well, a little bit, except that now as we head into the weekend, it's going to be just a little bit different. It's going to be getting warmer. Tomorrow, it'll be warm and dry across the area. We're expecting a high temperature of 86 degrees. By the time we get to the weekend, we'll be seeing 90-degree heat. I'll have the weekend forecast for you a little bit later. 
The Felix Cheeseboro murder trial took 10 days of testimony and arguments, but it took the jury only five hours to decide he was guilty on all counts. Police say Cheeseboro was the man who robbed and shot three men at Kelly's Barbershop in 1996. Two victims died. Tomorrow, prosecutors begin efforts to convince the same jury that Cheeseboro should be sentenced to death. Defense attorney Bill Nettles. We feel that now it gets particularly scary because we have what we feel is an innocent man on trial for his life. Arguments for and against the death sentence could last several days. For the second day in a row, a student at a Pelion school is caught with a gun. Investigators say a ninth grader showed up at Pelion High School this morning with a loaded 9mm pistol similar to the one shown here. Lexington County Sheriff James Metz says the teen did not threaten anyone but did talk about harming himself. The young man had apparently been going through some problems and probably wanted attention because if he wanted to have killed himself he could have very easily done that so we think he was uh, seeking attention just yesterday a first grader was found with a gun in her book bag at pelion elementary school deputies say the girl did not intend to use the weapon school officials say both students have been suspended pending a hearing Meanwhile, some Midlands parents are fighting for their children's safety, but the concern isn't guns in school. That issue, what some parents consider dangerous bus stops. Since October, Lexington Richland School District 5 has moved nearly a dozen bus stops. Now Craig Stover and Natalie Blake wait for their bus on the side of Piney Grove Road. Stover lives just to, behind the bus stop down on uh, Lewisham Road. For the past 15 or so years, the bus has driven down into the neighborhood to pick up the kids. District.